You are exalted above other names. Hallelujah. There is none like you. Hello, a very good day to you. My name is Sister Temitayo. I'm a Christian content creator and I'm here once again to share from the Open Heavens Daily Devotional compiled by the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E.A. Adeboye. And the reason I'm sharing from this particular Christian book is because the Lord instructed me to do so as I prepared to enter into the year 2020. So this is my fifth year of sharing from the devotional and that's why we call this season five. And all those videos from 2020, they're all loaded on my YouTube channel. My handle on YouTube is Temi Agedo, which is right on the screen. I encourage you to visit my channel, not only to view those old Open Heavens videos, which are a great study guide, but most importantly, to view the Open Heavens for the current day. And I know that that will bless you exceedingly. And very important, while you're on my YouTube channel, please don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. And God bless you as you do. Now, Pastor Adeboye led me to Christ in October 1997, a few years back when I was in the University of Lagos, Nigeria in West Africa. And that will give you a few scriptures from the Bible and the memory verse, and that helps you to understand the body of the text. Praise God. So let's go straight into the daily devotion, devotional. Today is Tuesday, November the 19th. Tuesday, November the 19th. And the title of today's Open Heavens is Drawing Miracles. Drawing mir Miracles. You know, like drawing water from the well. Drawing Miracles. And this brings to me, you know, when I just see a topic, different scriptures just start flying around my head, you know, in the spirit. Um, with water shall we draw, with joy shall we draw water from the wells of salvation, drawing miracles. Praise God. Drawing miracles. So our scriptural reading is taken from the book of Mark chapter 5, verses 21 to 34. Mark chapter 5, verses 21 to 34. And thus goes the reading of God's word, drawing miracles. Okay. And when Jesus passed over again by sheep onto the other side, much people gathered unto him and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and he besought him greatly saying, my little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her that she might be healed and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years, and had suffered many things of many phys physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. She, when she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may be, if I may touch his but his clothes, if, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched me? And the disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and says, Thou who touched me. And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith had made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. May God bless the reading of his word. Drawing miracles. So this, we all know the story. So, you know when I read the story, so there's Jairus, the, the, the main players here, Jairus, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the woman with the issue of love, don't, don't, know, don't know her name, Jairus' daughter, the 12 apostles. I just noticed there are 12 apostles. The girl, daughter's, Jairus' daughter was 12 years old, and this woman had an issue of blood 12 years. Mm, praise the Lord. So <laughs> it looks coincidental, but you know, the scriptures, um, there's no coincidence in the word of God. So, and as I read this, you know, Jairus was one of the Pharisees, and he had only one child, a daughter. She was 12 years old, and she lay sick, dying, you know. And he came to meet Jesus. He did not care whether they were going to kick him out of the synagogue for calling Jesus. He wasn't concerned. His only daughter was sick and nigh unto death. And he knew that <laughs> Jesus Christ would, is the only answer to that problem. And, you know, as, as, as I prepared this, I said to the Lord, I said, when people need miracles, they will believe it. They will believe in God. 
you know when you need a miracle all this you know when, you, when you're on social media and there are miracles i understand that they are false prophets they have been from the beginning you understand it's not a new thing you know when there's an original there will always be a fake when there's a fake there must be an original and you must be able to discern i'm using spiritual terms discern between the fake and the real this it didn't matter to to Jairus at this time you know he was going to put all his eggs in god's basket in the basket of jesus christ he was he knew that he had seen enough to know that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. He didn't care whether they were kicked out of the synagogue. He didn't care if anybody was upset with him. All he knew was that he had one daughter and she, was, she lay dying. And he went to Jesus Christ and fell. You see, he uh, then commented one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus, and he fell at his feet. He fell, he fell down and said, Lord, help me. You see, so all those people that criticize, uh, there are fake miracles around. And you know, God will judge those who have brought disrepute to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the to the body of Christ and to the sacred office of pastor of the pastor you know um you know but there, there's an original you must be able to discern the two between the two except you you are reprobate anyway Jesus Christ did not waste any time Jesus Christ began to follow him and there were a lot of people following him so they were pushing him they were touching everyone when he touched him you know they were just following him because <laughs> When God comes to town, and suddenly Jesus Christ stopped. There was a woman with the issue of blood. Um, she was bleeding excessively for twelve years, and you know, under the law, any woman who is in that condition is not allowed to come um, into the open, or she'll be stoned. But you know, you know, it's like the lepers. They said, if we stay here, we die. If we go into the city, we die. They, they stone us so. Let's just go. And that's what she said. She said, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I'll be whole. So she had heard testimonies. You know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by, uh, by the word of God. She had heard of how Jesus Christ raised the son of the widow of Nain. She heard about blind Bartimaeus that she herself knew. You know, I'm just, you know, she had seen the five. She partook, partook of the five loaves and two feet. This, this was definitely the man. And the ten, you know, she, 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 she had heard him teach. She... She had seen something, so her faith was stirred. And she said, this man can heal me. Because you see, in those days, there was, there was no surgery for fibroids or for endometriosis or whatever could have caused this excessive bleeding. There was no surgery. She, she had gone to this doctor, gone there, gone there, gone there, and nobody could do anything. There was no option of surgery. There was no, so all she knew she was God. You know, and, and if Jesus failed her, she would die. But Jesus never fails, never refers the case. And so she, she doesn't know what to disturb him. She just hid herself in the crowd and touched the hem of his garment. And Jesus Christ stopped her and he said, who touched me? Who touched me? And the, the disciples said, how can you ask who touched you? Everybody is chonging you. They, you know, we're pushing. They, no, how can you ask who touched me? In another um, synoptic gospel, he said, Somebody touched me for I felt virtue come out of me. I felt power. Somebody took power. Somebody laid hold on the anointing of god upon me somebody i felt virtue go out of me and then she came forth you know and he looked around to see who it was of course he knew who it was and she came and told her testimony and jesus christ said thy faith daughter thy faith had made thee whole go and be healed of thy plague be healed of the fibroid be healed of the endometriosis and I stand in the name of Jesus Christ and I say that every form of fibroid, excessive bleeding, endometriosis, any hormonal imbalance in your life as a woman that is causing you to bleed, that is causing you shame, that is causing you pain. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command that fountain of blood to dry up in Jesus' name. I command every fibroid to shrink in the mighty name of Jesus. Every growth die in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Be free in Jesus' name. And so um, by the time, in fact, by the time the Lord Jesus Christ finished dealing with um, the woman with the issue of blood, they came and said to Jairus, don't trouble the master that his daughter was dead but we're not going that far anyway where god wants us to stop today is you know the the story of the issue the woman with the issue of blood drawing miracles and the memory verse is taken from uh, mark chapter 9 verse 23 
And Jesus said unto him, If thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Mark 9, 23. And Jesus said unto him, If thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. So if you believe, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God is what Jesus Christ told him at her. Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? And God is not asking us for too much. Just have faith as a mustard seed. That's, that faith can is what saved our soul, is what led us to salvation. And is able, that seed is able to move mountains. As small as your faith is, you can move mountains. If thou believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. Even now and then in the Bible, you read about, we read about people who got unplanned miracles. For example, in the gospel, Jesus would be going somewhere, not planning to pray for someone along the line, but somehow someone would get a miracle from him. And one of such people is the woman with the issue of blood in our Bible reading today. Jesus was on his way to raise Jairus' daughter from the dead when she met him. She pushed through the crowd that followed him until she was able to touch his garment and get her miracle. In doing so, all the sufferings in the last 12 years of her life vanished. If she had not done what she did, she might have died a sick and wretched woman. But she moved. You know, she moved. You know, she moved. She, she had been building up her faith. She, 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 had, she had built up her faith. Her faith was strong. And, you know, she, that, it was that faith that moved her out. You understand? So, you see, our faith must be active. This year, our faith must not fail in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus, this year, 2024, the remaining days of this year, our faith will not fail. Our faith will not fail. God is going to come true for us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And this is a prayer I'm praying for myself and for you. That God will come through for us. He will not fail us. God never fails. He said, I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. You know? I will assuredly not. I, I will not. I will not in any way fail you, nor relax my hold on you. Assuredly not. I will not. He swore three times. I will not, I will not, I will not leave you helpless. Amen. You know, so we have to build up our faith. The Bible says in the book of Jude that we should build up ourselves on our most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. Peter said, so uh, Paul said, so what, do, what is the conclusion? I will pray in the spirit and I'll pray with my understanding also. Building up ourselves on our most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. And that's what that woman did. It was that faith. She, she, she heard, she had heard about Jesus. So we must be, and Jesus Christ said we should be careful how we hear. We should listen to the word of God, listen to messages, surround ourselves with God. There's no time to play nonsense, nonsense game. You know, when I was a child, I thought as a child, Paul said, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. The childish things are those things of the world that have no profit whatsoever in our lives. Put them aside. The friend that is not going to help you, help your Christian race, cannot be your best friend. You understand? Because this race is a personal race. You can't afford to, you understand? Mm -hmm. Praise God. So as she touched the helm of his garment, and that is saying that if she did not touch Jesus Christ that day, if she delayed, if she was hesitant, she would have probably died. Definitely, she would have died eventually. Someone who had been bleeding for 12 years, she had gotten to the end of the road. Jesus Christ is the final bus stop. And do you know that you can get a miracle even when a minister is not praying for you? You can be at a program and while at a, while administration is going on, if you say to yourself, just like the man with the issue of blood, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I will receive my miracle. Do you know God would do it? Yes. So, you see, as I read this, I was saying to the Lord, I said, um, some people, hmm, they say, oh, I don't need to get to any pastor. So God usually will walk through his servants. The Bible says by by the hand of a prophet, God brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, he sustained them. You know, God didn't need Moses. But God was teaching us that he will always put a set man there. And he will always send Moses to the people. Do you understand? So, you understand? So, God will always raise, God always raises somebody. The Bible says, and then God raised Shamgar, the son of so-so and so, uh, 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 to, to deliver the people of Israel. He always raises somebody. Okay? And you're not going to worship that person. You are, you know that God sent that person to bring deliverance. And when you, the word, God, that's why the Bible says that God will always confirm the word of his servant, his servant, and perform all the counsel of his messenger. So these people are sent of God. If the 
if you are in a Bible-believing church. And God will always confirm the word of that, that man or that woman that he has sent. Okay, so that is saying that um, even without touching them, if when you come to church, because, because miracles can happen anywhere, on the Wednesday service, on the Friday, on the Sunday service, just make sure you are in the right place at the right time. So that we do not miss our, the day of our visitation. Okay, so, um, you know, and that is saying that you can get a miracle without even touching the man of God. Just we must be focused when we come to church, we are going to meet God. God is the one that heals, that delivers and sets free. Make sure your eyes are on him. Okay? And not on the pastor's suit. Make sure that you're looking up to, we are looking up to Jesus. We must be very focused. You're not going there to just look for husband and wife and, you know, we're looking unto Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. Because he is the one we're going to see. The Bible says, unto the Lord shall the gathering of the people be. Okay? So it's unto the Lord. And that's why God, Jesus Christ said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of God has been lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. So you see, when we go to church, expect, we must have expectations that God is going to meet me here. God is going to lift me out of the pit wherein there is no water. God is going to bring deliverance to my soul. Because upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. You understand? Because God, God, he's the Lord in the midst of his people, is mighty to save. Excuse me, I'm mighty to deliver. The Bible says that the Lord standeth in the congregation of the mighty and he judgeth amongst the gods. God will do it. He will do it. He can never fail. He will not leave us nor forsake us. Assuredly not. Amen. Daddy gives a testimony. He says, one of our drummers in RCCG had been waiting on God for the fruit of the womb. One day, while the Holy Ghost service was going on, he said in his heart, if the general of Asia can look, just look at me, I will have my child. I just, I didn't know what was going on. I just looked his way and he was very excited. And nine months later, his baby came. There was also a man, many, a woman many years ago who had heard of the great things that God was doing through us. She decided to come for one of our programs and said in her heart, if I can just see the man of God, I'll receive my healing. When I came up, she asked those around her to confirm that the fellow on the altar was me. And when they confirmed it, she started rejoicing and got her miracle. God is in the midst of us, you know, and I was saying yesterday that God is um, moving, whether you feel him or not. You know, you can come to church and just, <laughs> and, you know, you just come to church and, you know, you're just there minding your business and God touches you. You know, because God is moving around you, whether you, whether you feel it or not. And sometimes you can feel the presence of God. You can feel the anointing. You can, you can feel it. It's all going all through your body. You can feel it. And you are just speaking in tongues and praying in the Holy Ghost and praying in the Holy Ghost. Make sure church is not be business as, be a you. It's not business as usual. Go there with a mindset that the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. God is coming. Just wait for him. And God is, that is telling how, and, and you know, God confirms this thing. I remember there was a time in, you know, and, and can I say this, that um, miracles are not happening in just your church. Your, your, your man of God is not the only man of God, or your woman of God is not the only woman of God. God is doing great things in the body of Christ. Okay, God is doing great things in the body of Christ. In the, the churches in the backside of the desert where you don't know who the pastor is, you don't even know that country, God is moving mightily. This is normal thing. So anyway, the, the drummer, one of the drummers in RCC, he just said in his mind, that if daddy can just look my way, I know God will bless me because he had been waiting on the Lord for a child. And, you know, daddy was just doing his thing. Not because of daddy, but because the God that was behind daddy. So God saw his heart and moved the man of God's head. The man of God didn't know. But that guy knew he got a miracle. That's, that's the awesomeness of God. You know? Um, and he got his child. And a woman who was not even a member of this church. You know? Redeemed Christian Church of who? Redeemed Christian Church of God. Christ, which embassy? Christ, the embassy is in, of Christ. You understand? So the church is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one that doeth the works. And the woman who was from another church just came. She had heard of things that were happening. She wanted to see. She said she cannot see the man of God. She'll be okay. God always honors, he always honors faith like that. You know? Because she didn't know who he was. She asked, is that him? Is that Pastor Deboe? They said yes, and she rejoiced because she knew she had gotten her miracle. I remember also when I got born again, when I got to the place where we we're having the meeting, where I got saved, 
all of all the pastors were in suit. So I asked my friend that brought me, I said, so who, who, where is the man of God you were talking about? There he was, he was wearing his shorts. He looked very ordinary, green, gray trouser and short sleeves shirt. Was that, that was what daddy was wearing. All the other pastors were wearing suits. You would never know that that was the man of God. But he led me to Christ and my destiny changed. And here I am. <laughs> Glory to God. If you have faith, you can get miracle at any time. Even if a minister of God does not mention your case or lay hands on you during a ministration, you can get a miracle of God through him. You don't have to wait for a minister of God to pray for you. You can get a miracle through him or her with your faith. And that's why we must build up our faith. You know, because... You, we must be ready at that time when God comes. Your, our, our, Jonathan, we must build up ourselves on our most holy faith every day, studying the word of God, listening to messages, so that our, our spirit is ready for the day of God's visitation. My people shall be willing in the day of God's power. Amen. We are willing. That we are willing, you know, when God comes, our faith is already high. We just lay hold on, on our miracle. I remember I had a problem in my leg, my 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 ankle, and when um, the man of God was praying, I had I, I was ready, you know. When he uh, at the end, the um, particular man of God, as he was praying, as he said, "Now lay your hands on the place that is hurting." I laid my hands. I knew I was going to, as well, I was ready. That this anointing cannot pass me by. <laughs> uh, it, it just I just had to be healed. My ankle was hurting. You know, and I got healed. And even one day I was walking down the road, I was like, ah, the pain is gone. It's gone. Whatever the Lord doeth, it shall be forever. Not, nothing can be put to it. Nothing can be removed from it. And God doeth these things that men may fear before him. Praise God. Amen. So use your faith. Use your faith. It's God who heals. And he's right there in the presence of God. So believe in God. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Bible says we should believe, the, believe in it. This is what I was looking for earlier today. Believe the Lord your God. The Bible says we should believe in the Lord our God. So shall we be established. Believe his prophets. So shall we prosper. Amen. Reflection. Do you have the kind of faith that draws miracles from God? Do we have that kind of faith? Yes, Father, we thank you and we glorify you. We glorify your great name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you glory and thanks for the grace to hear your word. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We are hearers and we are doers of the word. And we declare that our faith is active. Our faith is walking in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Our, Christ, our faith is growing and our faith is strong in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father, Lord, because you do exceedingly abundantly above that which we are able to ask or think or imagine according to your power that is at work in us we give you praises and glory thank you god the holy spirit almighty god we ask that you meet us at the point of our need we thank you because you will never fail us in jesus name that before this year runs out before the bible said before the year was out hannah brought forth his son father before this year 2024 is out visit us almighty god as you visited sarah do for us as you said and visit us visit us as you said and do for all to us as you promised in the mighty name of jesus christ thank you god the holy ghost in jesus mighty name amen thank you so much for taking time to listen to me i hope this blessed you i'm sure it did uh while you're on my youtube channel even if you saw me on facebook please don't forget to subscribe like comment and share and god bless you as you do my name again is sister timothy have a beautiful day god bless you god bless you exceedingly.